ever heard of a company called Serco? Well, it might be the biggest company that you have never heard of. Everyone knows about the private prison industry, the transportation industry, and government agencies. But what if I told you that there was just one company that oversaw almost every facet of all of these sectors? Yep, that's Serco, the mother of all multinational corporations. Serco is a $1.5 billion services company based in Hook, North Hampshire in the United Kingdom, whose motto is bringing services to life. So what the hell does that actually mean? Well, according to their website, Serco improves the quality and efficiency of essential services that matter to millions of people around the world. The work we do for national and local governments involves us with the most important areas of public service, including health, education, transport, science, and defense. Now, I know it still sounds very vague about what they actually do, but more importantly is how many industries Serco actually oversees across the entire planet. Since governments from around the world outsource to Serco, the massive corporation has its tentacles in 16 countries worldwide. They cash in on detention. Serco runs seven immigration centers and have a, has a presence on every military base in Australia. They're also the largest operator of private prisons in the UK. Serco also directs airplanes. They are the largest air traffic controllers in the world with 54 towers in the US alone. The company also supplies air traffic control in Iraq and the United Arab Emirates. Serco also moves people on the ground from Scotland ferries to Dubai metros. But the company not only manages public transport everywhere, but also operates speed track cameras and creates the software for monitoring traffic across London. But don't worry, Circo's looking out for the kids, guys. They currently have contracts to run every state school in Bradford, England. But they haven't forgotten about grandma and grandpa. They're privatizing community centers too. If you haven't figured it out yet, Circo is essentially the Swiss army knife of corporations. Serco plays doctor, too. Private hospitals are a big industry under the umbrella company. And Serco has started to acquire hospitals in Australia and England. Serco is so unbelievably powerful that they even control time. Yep, Serco has friends in such high places, they have been contracted to set Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Do you think that things like running border patrol and protecting nuclear arsenals should be run by a government body or a private multinational? Well, I'm sure you can guess what I'm getting at next. Serco does both. Not only do they look over the, the country's entire nuclear arsenal, they also run the UK's ballistic missile defense system. In fact, their primary purpose of being stationed here in the United States is to supply defense and intelligence services across the nation. Check out their promo video for the US government. For the Department of Homeland Security, we manage over 62 million active records, helping to keep our nation secure. Think of it as an integrated system that helps the right person make the right decision at the right time. For the intelligence community, we provide planning, training, program support, and project execution. And the rest, it's classified. The rest is classified? Guys, we already think you're shady. Is it really necessary to tell us that you have even more secrets? But thanks for the disclaimer. So what branches of the government does Serco specifically provide services to? Well, the U.S. Army, U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the Ministry of Ontario, U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Marine Corps, Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, U.S. Department of State, the Intelligence Community. Whew, let me catch my breath. I just wanted to establish the extent of their reach. But wait, there's more. Circo's so passionately committed to the U.S. that they're also working with the government to fight cyber terrorism. And they remain passionately committed to the American government's mission. Check it out. I like to say, we don't have to look hard to find the best and brightest. They find us. We are passionate about the future of our nation and we embrace our government's mission as our mission. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. Your mission, our passion. We are the company that runs the world. But don't worry, they're passionate about swallowing up the world industry by industry, government by government. Since 1994, they've grown by over 1,200% and they continue to acquire more contracts and services every day. 
So how does it happen that a multinational corporation can run things such as the time and the safeguarding of nuclear weapons? All well, about 85% of Circo's employees are also ex-public servants, so they have the know-how and networking to keep that revolving door going. So why don't we know more about Circo? Well, that's just the problem, is that this corporation has way too much power and way too much control. There's no doubt that we live in a corporatocracy. The corporate coup d'etat has already taken over. The question is, how are we going to fight it? I couldn't believe it. Who's the boss? Rupert Soames. He's the CEO of Serco. Rupert, who's that, Chucky? Rupert Soames. He's the brother of the Tory MP, Nicholas Soames. They are the, they are the grandsons of Winston Bloody Churchill. They went to Eton. You're like, you what? And that's the boss of Circo? Circo. Circo yeah. is made up. And they had a, sh a shareholders meeting on the 47th floor of the North Tower on the yes. morning of 911. Yes. So you've got the chief executive, Chris Hyman. He goes up to the mm -hmm. Windows of the World restaurant at the top of the North Tower. And he has a breakfast meeting. Mm -hmm. And around 8.30, for whatever reason, he decides he's mm -hmm. going to leave the breakfast meeting. And everyone who stayed behind... Mm -hmm fried on 911 hmm. when i say fried i mean the heat hmm. of what went off in the uh, north tower was primarily due to incendiaries in the elevator shafts anyway he goes into the elevator shafts and i i don't know whether the slime ball is the right kind of description <laughs> but this guy he gets into the elevators and he goes down to the 47th floor mm -hmm. and makes a presentation to shareholders hmm. so a very legitimate question is who were the shareholders of right. Circo that met on the 47th floor, all of whom got out of the building alive, as far as we know, mm -hmm. and why weren't any of them interviewed by the FBI? Right. Well, mm. let me go through some of the um, shareholders of Circo. Yes. You have the Teachers Pension Fund, which mm. is one of the biggest private pension funds in the world. These are uh, the pensions, managing the pensions of faculty members. Mm. So, for example, uh, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama there's a couple of faculty members Wow! they will be getting <laughs> uh, pensions from uh, TIA yes. the Teachers Insurance Annuity Association and Bill and Hillary Clinton huh. right so they have a vested wow. interest and now I don't know wow. which representatives of the Teachers Pension Fund appeared on the 47th floor but I would like to see that individual man or woman hauled before the FBI yes and interviewed, well, what did you do? What did you hear? What we? What was the presentation about? Right. Right. Now, and, and I think huh. this was a virtual command center set up by the FBI mm -hmm. on the 47th floor where they were wagering on the outcome of the war game. What? So death betting, you know. So what, what wow. I, when I say wagering, this is um, there's a man um, who was wow. with Cantor Fitzgerald, the chief executive officer yes they lost hmm. 658 people hmm. in the top of the north tower hmm. during that attack within 24 hours all of the computers right this is this was the world's leading broker in government securities euro bonds mm -hmm. and sovereign debt all of the computers that were knocked out in the north tower the backups were switched on in london Wow. So everyone yes. wow. who didn't get killed mm. in Cantor Fitzgerald at the top of the Tower stood to benefit because that trading activity then accelerated through London. So oh. we take the teachers. Now, then you have um, uh, Goldman Sachs, yes. Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank Corporation. Mm. You have nine mm. so-called global custodians, uh, shareholders in Circo, with... On 911, 81 trillion dollars of assets in the management. Mm. Now, what that means is, you take a global custodian like BNY Mellon, and on behalf of certain pension funds like the firefighters in New York, they buy shares in various companies, mm -hmm. such as Boeing. You add all their holdings together, and the global custodians, which are shareholders in Serco, own 60% of Boeing aircraft. If they know that that attack is mm. going to take place, they can guess which way Boeing shares are going to go, and they either can go short or can go long. So 
the answer to your question is yes Lockheed Martin made some very major movements as a result of 911 because they started getting contracts for defense bigger contracts wow. for defense so you'd go long on Lockheed Martin but you might go short on companies that were going to go bankrupt where so does, it was a huge this is a huge stock exchange scam and where does Hillary Clinton uh, fit in all of this I know when she was at the Rose Law Firm in Little Rock Arkansas before she became first lady she was a patent attorney and uh, rumor has it that she had her name as part of the patent for this QRS-11 gyro chip. I mean, where does Hillary Clinton fit into this circle, uh, the Visa uh, National Center in 9-11? Wonderful question, Larry. Now, uh, yes, she is or was a patent lawyer. And actually, as far as I'm concerned, if you learn how to be a patent lawyer, even if you're not actively uh, uh, acting as a patent lawyer, you can do what patent lawyers do. And right. what patent lawyers do is... I believe under a corrupt system, yes. they send patents into what's called a patent thicket or a patent pool. Mm -hmm. So if I come along with a new idea that competes with someone within the patent pool, let's call them a secret society if you will, mm -hmm. they're going to either bankrupt me or kill me or buy my patent and reassign it. Mm. And basically, that's the holy grail or the crown jewels for the conspirators. Wow. It's control of the patent pools of major contractors. Now, what she was involved in hmm. was brokering the patent for the QRS-11 gyro chip. QRS-11 stands for Quartz Rate Sensor, which hmm. is a gyro chip that goes in the Maverick missile. So it's a, an automatic guidance system. So you punch in the coordinates for your missile and the gyro chip will take you there. Unfortunately, hmm. that can be done for a civilian aircraft if you have oh. access to the patented Boeing Honeywell uninterruptible autopilot. Uh, one of the greatest living experts on that is Field McConnell. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the way the weapons were flown on 911, let me just take the Pentagon, for yes. example. Mm -hmm. That was executed allegedly by a plane flown by uh, Field McConnell's classmate at the U.S. Naval Academy, Captain Chick Burlingham, mm -hmm. allegedly hijacked by a low time. Uh, Muslim and being Muslim is irrelevant. The fact is he was a low time pilot who could barely fly a Cessna and it executed from 7,000 feet a tight slice back pivoted turn of 270 degrees hmm. at 500 miles an hour leveling off at 15 feet above the Pentagon lawn and punching a hole right through the Pentagon's hmm. US Navy Command Center which is probably the most important strategic asset in the United States military armory, if, you're, if you will. And the computers that went into that Pentagon's U.S. Navy Command Center were provided mm -hmm. through um, Sun Microsystems by John Benet Ramsey's father. Hmm. Wow. So with him out of the way, they could hack into the computer systems inside the Pentagon and get the Pentagon's defenses to stand down on 911 during the attack. And it wasn't done by a Boeing civilian aircraft. What Field and I believe it was done by an A3 Sky Warrior from Raytheon, hmm. which dropped an air to ground missile that was guided into the hmm. Pentagon's US Navy Command Center. And this was flying under a patent provided by Lockheed Martin. And it punched a hole through eight walls, right through to the inner courtyard. And there's photographs you can see of the image from the inner courtyard. There's a 12-foot diameter hole with the debris inside the inner courtyard. And mm. from the simple laws of physics, a Boeing aircraft cannot do that, Larry. This is mind-blowing. This, this is mind-blowing. And uh, again, um, this, how high, how wide, how deep does this pedophile ring go as far as... Uh, in Washington, D.C. And, and around the world. How deep is this, uh, Mr. Hawkins, as we're talking about the greatest conspiracy ever told? Uh, it's as deep as it's high, and it's all the way to the top. And wow. the main protagonist of this is the company that developed demon face recognition software. Yes. Talk about that. Now, mm -hmm. this is was developed around 1994 by Seco. Oh. 
Right. Now, what they can do with mm. demon face recognition software, they can mm. hack into the internet, right, and look at the various news mm. groups as they develop their particular interests. Mm. Some might be historical research. Some might be cloud-centric crime scene investigation. Mm -hmm. Some might be raves at the BC pig farm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you picked up on our work on the pig farm up in British mm -hmm. Columbia, yeah. but from the period 1996 to 2002, between 60 and 100 prostitutes were taken from the downtown east side, primarily mm -hmm. First Nations people, mm -hmm. many with arrests and drug problems, exceedingly poor, taken wow. out to the pig farm, and slaughtered in front of an audience of up to 1,700 people. Oh, my God. Mm. And mm. and I hate to say this, Go ahead. in some cases, eaten oh. at cannibal feasts. Oh now, my God. people say to me, David, why do you talk about this? My, my problem mm. is, if no one talks about it, yes. then you empower the That's evildoers, it. and they move on. Yes. Because... And, uh, and uh, let me let me address this issue of the word terrorist. Yeah. These people are not terrorists; they're criminals. Mm. Uh, they use terror as a weapon. Yes. Now, when people go out to that pig farm, it was a federally registered society, Larry, mm -hmm. by Ottawa. It was called the Piggy Palace Good Time Society, and they mm -hmm. were licensed to hold sports and entertainment events mm. and raise money, I believe, to get the women off the streets. Right. Well, they got the women off the streets by abducting them and cooking them. Oh, my God. There was a fridge full of body parts, mm. right? This is the greatest serial killing, I believe, oh. possibly in history, right, where targeted vulnerable individuals oh were taken out to the pig farm. Uh, people would fly in from across the country, including the United States, to attend the Friday night raves. Oh this is God. an allegation or a supposition in the roof of the barns where these festivities or activities were going on, there was a camera with demon face recognition software. Wow. So you go, mm. you would go in, in perhaps good faith. The guards mm. were hell's angels. There was a 600 pound boar pig, you know, running around the outside to nip people. Right. There was no easy parking. So I think the guests had to be bussed in from nearby hotels. Wow. Using demon oh, face recognition software, they would be tracked to the building. They would have the images of what was done to these poor women. Oh. And those images would be archived hmm. onto the internet, the federal bridge. So if you have from 1996 hmm. to 2002, every Friday night, hmm. it probably wasn't every Friday night, uh, it was when there was a victim that was available, up to 1,700 people. You've got a lot of people. Yes who are now potentially blackmailed. Now, wow. many people would say, wow. well, they're evil, etc., go after them. And I'm saying, well, if you go after the victim of blackmail, you're going to perhaps satisfy yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you don't go after the blackmailer, you've done nothing. You've done nothing. Wow. Right? The blackmailer is Circo. Mm. On a global scale. It's not just, if you hear of these terrible things being done to children in Syria and Iraq you know, the massacres of the Christians, etc., etc. I'm saying these are not random acts of violence by some local terrorist organization. It's a highly orchestrated, orchestrated program to build up, I dare wow. I say it, snuff films, etc., yes. to intimidate other Christians. Wow. Right? To make Christians, for example, believe there's an organization out there called ISIS or Al-Qaeda or mm. Bin Laden. But Bin Laden's office was in London. Hmm. Hmm. controlled by British intelligence prior to the 911 attack. Hmm. 